All right, welcome. We've got Mr. Pratik Singh here from Learn App, and he's here to share a little bit more about systems and algo trading. He's the expert here, you know. Oh, I, I asked a few questions on my Instagram, and I've been bombarded with them. It's honestly pretty crazy. The matter of a few hours, so it's it should be a pretty interesting session. I won't uh, try to introduce you, Mr. Pratik, because I know I'll butcher the intro. So, uh, how about you introduce yourself? Uh, hey, thanks, Kunal, for having me, man. My pleasure. Uh, Kunal said I need a Sunday to talk about algo trading. I'm like done. <laughs> we can definitely do that yeah so uh, i i've been trading for 12 years or so 2007 to now what is that 13 years um and it's been interesting because you know we just couldn't do algo before this uh now you sort of can things are a lot better there are a lot more resources like like stock markets with kunal uh you know where you can learn stuff so i think uh, that that's interesting <laughs> you can do a nice dance yeah <laughs> um so yeah where do you want to start you want to uh, start with algo where do you want to start I think it would help if you can just share a bit about your journey, how you got started, what's your background. I think that will help many people relate to what you actually do and how you are here. Cool. So uh, what I'll do is I'll keep this really short uh, so that we can focus more on the algo stuff, the trading stuff. I think okay. a lot of people are interested in that. So uh, basically, I was born in I was born in Abu Dhabi, moved to Tanzania. Then studied. That's Africa. Dar es Salaam. There's a place called Dar es Salaam. Uh, then I studied in uh, Singapore and then Malaysia. And then uh, for the first time, we moved to India. Right. So Indian-looking, UP <laughs> roots, um, English accent. I didn't have friends, bro. <laughs> like, people did not like me. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> Fake accent. I mean, it was that's how I spoke, but to them it is a fake accent because I looked like I was from like Panchkula, right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't look. Yeah. Uh, so kids didn't like me initially, but I made the small group of friends. Uh, that was interesting. Anyway, uh, when we came back, uh, I was supposed to go into class nine or ten, um, and uh, I had troubles admission. Dad opened. Uh, an ICIC direct DNAT account, which was awesome for him because he thought three in one is just amazing. Uh, for me, I was like stock market. Hmm, let's see what that is, um, and that's how the thing with stock markets began, right? So um, yeah, and then he moved to Nainital, and uh, basically I wanted to start my own hedge fund, right? I'm like, okay, here's the master plan. I'm gonna trade uh, this fifty thousand rupees I have. I'm gonna bring it up to a few crores. Should be simple. And then I'm going to start a hedge fund, and you know that was the plan. Uh, but then, of course, that didn't happen. Compounding is not easy. Although I was profitable, uh, I mean, it just takes time, right? Mm. Uh, you see how wrinkly Warren Buffett is. It takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't happen in a year or so. Yeah. Um, so I joined a call center. Uh, so I used to um, sell travel packages to Australians uh, in the day. It was a day sh- uh, in the evening, okay. and during the day I would trade in the stock markets. Um, so that's I, so that's how I did that. Then I became uh, head of marketing in a school in in Rachi where there was no one except me. So <laughs> <laughs> it was just me and marketing, I guess. <laughs> so there wasn't a team, but the title was head of marketing. I learned a lot though. That was that was a cool time. And I also uh, I like to believe. So I shorted the 2008 crash then. Uh, so. Hmm. um we had mini nifty contracts then i think okay. there were 12000 a contract okay and it was 20 shares of nifty it's called mini right. nifty okay and i shorted a bunch of those contracts because i drew this trend line and the market's broke the trend line i said okay i'll short it there'll be a small move down <laughs> uh, but there was a huge move yeah. down <laughs> <laughs> um and i tripled my capital wow uh, okay. and i was just super happy Um, yeah. Again, triple sounds interesting, but it was like thirty-three thousand becoming a lakh. <laughs> so it wasn't that much, yeah. <laughs> but I never revealed anyone the amount. I always said three hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, so that was interesting. And then, uh, long story short, tried to start four other companies. Ran those four companies, um, all around financial education. I guess mm-hmm. the first one was a cafe, and the fifth one, which is now, which is Learn App. Uh, is what is what we run. Yeah, I'm sure everyone that's heard of Learn App. I mean, at this point, so <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. that's the story. So 
that's great and and so uh, obviously algo and systems is something that that has fascinated so many people it's almost become a buzzword if if you know you don't mind me saying that at this point so how how exactly did you understand that hey you know algo and systems is what i want to do yeah absolutely so uh, i think back then right it's not for sake of some, making me sound old but i'm not uh, but, but but back then we didn't have any resources right so literally the only resource was reading books um, and that's the i mean i still have that habit right i'll still read books a lot of them as much as i can but i also throw them away if they're not good enough so <laughs> i'm not the you know i i can't read it back to back if i'm not interested i just be like this is not good and i'll just read it but you could only learn through books uh so linda rashki and then there was this amazing book i need to tell the listeners about okay it was about the biography called the reminiscence of a stock operator have you have you read it kuna i have heard of it you know but i haven't read it yet so, super so it, it's about this uh broke i mean this guy is from nowhere okay. um and and his name is jesse livermore and he becomes so wealthy that he owns his own railroad private so it's equivalent to the private jet right yeah um and i think he was worth like 300 400 million dollars in today's time maybe more but he was pretty rich now i was reading this book getting inspired he got broke three times krunal i'm sitting in nainital and be like i'm going to start my hedge fund people say trading doesn't work it's going to work out and i'd read and in the end i'm sorry spoiler alert he kills himself <laughs> <laughs> so where yeah. do I draw inspiration from <laughs> um so I, so it was really difficult actually to find inspiration but then i found out that you have paul tudor jones and all these traders um who run funds and and they do well and uh and then i modeled myself after that and and started following this baba on um uh, these popular forums online right. and he basically taught a lot i learned a lot from him it was all discretionary um and he started posting his trades and you know humans being humans started following him so i started placing trades as he would place trades um saying that i understand the system but i'm just seeing his trade for confirmation and i conditioned my mind in such a way to follow him that if he didn't post but i was sure that this there was a trade according to the system i wouldn't take that trade Yeah. Now this happened for 3 years. All right. Um I would net net not really make that much money. It was swing trading and it, the, the forums are still out there actually. You can probably still read them. 2007, 8, 9, 10, you know. Um and one interesting thing that happened to Nal is I I was long on Nifty one day, right? Uh and I was long for 2 weeks, which is the longest I held. Okay. And this guy didn't update the stop loss. And according to me, we should have been stopped out long time back. He said, "No, no, no. Place your stop loss thousand points away. Thousand yeah. points when Nifty was at six thousand is a lot. It's like twenty yeah. percent, right? Yeah. Ah, uh, it's really far. So I, I said, okay, hesitantly, and got into an argument. He said, no, no. Place the stop loss a thousand points. Away. And I did that. And the market fell twelve hundred points. Oh. And these are leveraged contracts. So I lost yeah. a lot of money on that trade. And as soon as that happened, I said, "Oh, looks like we were wrong." And he posts booked profit. <laughs> and I said, "What? When did you enter?" He's like, "Entered and entered two, three times again, and now I've doubled my money." And that should have felt maybe this guy is lying. <laughs> maybe, just maybe. Um, but to be honest, you know, young people are dumb. I still am. Uh, I continued to follow him, joined his company, and then. bunch of stuff happened but that's when i realized basically all of these mistakes is that you can't be following someone you need to have a system of your own a set of rules that you can follow day in day out without talking to anyone and if you can do that over a long period of time you'll make money warren buffett does that in investing you can do that in trading trading everyone has a system now how do you get to that system i think that's the problem and that's what yeah. we can talk about today perfect so exactly like you know it it's all it all sounds good you know uh after a certain point i think everyone understands that hey you know the markets are not going to be kind forever i need to have a plan down i need to be consistent with that plan but then coming to that plan and you know getting to the process of you know understanding and building that plan is what really sort of uh deters people away and turns people away from actually you know continuing on this journey so 
yeah i think a bit more on that if you don't mind i think that would help like how how exactly can one uh, get a system or develop an algo algo of course bit specific but at least a system right so i think that all the books i read kept saying get a system get a system i'm like that's fine but where is the system <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no one talked about a system so yeah. what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell a, tell you a very simple system now okay and as we move forward in the podcast i'll give a second system on algo trading which which is which is slightly better than the first one mm-hmm. i'll keep the first one super simple so it's easy right. to follow okay so um there, there, there are two things that you have to do no matter what your system is right one you need to know what is the the probability of success so let's suppose um you have a forgive me for saying moving average but it's the easiest way to explain this so let's suppose we have a 50 day moving average or a 200 day moving average and you say uh, i will find stocks which are below the 200 day moving average as soon as the stock closes above the 200 day moving average i'll buy let's suppose you'll do this uh, and then you'll say the day the market closes below say the 200 day moving average i will exit and that's my system yeah now uh, that's your entry that's your exit what you need to do is you need to test this on the stocks that you want to trade with ideally you shouldn't pick the stocks there should be a mathematical way for you to pick the stocks okay. which i'll explain in a bit uh, but let's suppose you say okay i'll trade only these five stocks you shouldn't do that but let's suppose these five stocks and you need to then map all these trades theoretically out over the last maybe x number of years to find a thousand trades and you need to say okay if i follow this over the last x number of years how many of these trades were profitable how many of these trades were losses because you have a defined exit you have a defined entry you need to have a defined profit taking system so maybe you'll exit at 7% or 2x of risk which is called rr mm-hmm. so you can google that um and then based on basis of that you can find out what's your hit rate now what's a good hit rate anything above 55% is good okay right um anyone telling you otherwise is trying to sell you something stay away <laughs> from him block him on whatsapp yeah. yeah um so the first thing is what's the probability of success how many trades are winners how many are losers second you should percentageize it the third is your risk to reward so let let's do this hypothetical example right so i i play with krunal although he already knows this answer but we'll play anyway yeah. um let's say we have 10 trades five mm-hmm. of them are profits five of them are losses um am i a break even trader that that would depend on how much you're losing and how much you're gaining okay absolutely um so five losses five profits if the yeah. five uh, profits made 100 rupees but the five losses lost only 10 rupees or 20 rupees you're fine right mm-hmm. so the odds should be in your favor and you can actually uh, model this so when you enter in our moving average strategy you can say uh, let's suppose if i got stopped out i would lose 100 rupees i will exit only if i make 300 rupees otherwise i won't exit okay right? you can actually model this and you can test it over 100 uh or oh, sorry 1000 trades and see what happens this mm-hmm. testing is called back testing yeah so that moving average part where we said i'll enter here enter there that's your hypothesis you'll actually test it over 1000 trades that's your back test and then once you figure this out you should probably take a few trades with small capital on your own and if the back test and your real trades are the same then you can think of automating it into an algorithm okay. which is the last right um, you don't want to automate something that loses you 10% a day right <laughs> so, uh, i think people yeah. jump to the automation part because they okay. think they can download a code press yeah. run and then go about <laughs> their lives and come oh i am yeah. forbes 100 on the list <laughs> but that's not yeah yeah um so i i think that's the entire system right so hypothesis back test have lots of data and then executed using an algorithm but that's the last step people won't reach this step usually so yeah that's great i think i think you you put a really valid point out there that people just jump to automation like if you talk about systems and algo it's like hey i'll sit my code will make me money and i'll just blow all that money So I think I think that's something that people need to understand. That that's a great point that you. Well, and there. even for investing, like, you know, like I, I could give an example for an investing algorithm. Would could you talk about that? Would that be interesting? Hundred so, percent. Um, okay. So 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 let's let's do an investing algorithm. Okay. I think the future is fund managerless. I don't think you need fund managers anymore because you can actually take data, find patterns, create systems, and then run it for yourself. 
I'm sure there'll be services out there in the future. There already are, uh, which can give you these systems, and you can rent it or something like, or maybe at least edit it. Um, so let's see. Uh, let let's imagine what an investing algorithm would look like. First, your universe. You don't pick every stock. You pick only the top hundred. So that's Nifty fifty and Nifty next fifty put together. That's a Nifty hundred. These are generally okay stocks. Um, they could have scams. They could have bad owners. They could be the management could be incorrect. But trust me, no matter how much research of financial analysis you do, you cannot find that out. It's just okay. you can't do it. So let's ignore that for now, and I'll tell you how we can save ourselves from it. So you have hundred Nifty hundred. The next thing you need to do is say, okay, what stocks are making all-time highs? Right. This is an example. Mm-hmm. What stocks are making all-time highs? So maybe you'll come up with maybe seven or eight companies. Okay. Your job will then be to invest in the in say fifteen or twenty companies. That's your entry criteria. That's making an all-time high. The second filter you can add on this is that your your exit. So uh, so if you want to get a little deeper into this, what you can do is you can say, okay, the ROCE must be above thirty percent. Okay. Right, that means it's an it's an efficient company that the shareholders' equity is being reinvested properly, and it's an it's a money efficient business, right? So you could do that that the ROC is above thirty percent. The other thing you could do is is the sales growth growing? Although sales growth doesn't mean squat, but if you do sales growth and ROC good, that mm-hmm. means it's a efficient company. Yeah. Generally, should be okay. So these are two other filters you can do before you enter. Um, there are other things you can do, like is it a leader? But that's very qualitative. So let's stick True. to quantitative stuff, right? Numbers. Um, so that's your entry. Now, when do you exit, right? So what you can do is maybe if it goes below a hundred day moving average or two hundred day moving average, you exit. Just keep it simple. That if it starts doing this, you're out basically, mm-hmm. right? Um, you're out. So that's your entry. Now you've entered. Let's suppose in your fifteen stocks, you have Yes Bank, PC Jewelers, Tata Motors, uh, say Kingfisher. Let's suppose Gitanjali. Let's suppose somehow you got yeah. these companies. Although it won't happen, you won't get Gitanjali Nifty Hundred. But let's assume uh, you, you screwed up and you got these five. Now you will enter. It will go below two hundred day moving average. You'll make losses on all five of them, and you have to exit. Now here's the key, right? You exited the wrong companies. Uh, that that's interesting. So we have a course on this on Learn App, right? Called uh, by Atul Suri, who talks about this. Um, okay. And and he used to work with Rakesh Junjunwala uh, very care very closely, um, so he explained this really well. Um, so you've exited these five companies. Now you're left with like ten more. You just need one Aishar, one MRF, mm-hmm. one Colgate, etc. to make all of this worth it. True. Right? Maybe Reliance and HDFC Bank too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you probably got those companies. And those companies did like a four x, five x, six x. Losses didn't matter. Um, and that's how the algo works. A small portion of your trades or investments will make almost all of your money. Okay. Um, also true for like money managers, right? Think of Sequoia Capital. Yeah. It invests in private companies. Do you think they have a hundred WhatsApps? <laughs> of course not. They just yeah. won. Yeah. Um, but they made thousands of trades investing in these companies over the last decades, right? So. Uh, I think that's the just law of money we can call it. True. Uh, that some investments will make outsized returns. So, sorry, I've been talking a lot. I hope that made sense. No, it's it's perfect. I think one one little observation that I made was that the entry here was based on more of fundamental factors, whereas uh, you know the exit was based on the technical ones, the basic technical moving average one. So, is that something which is uh, preferred? Or is it something that that just sort of happened because you know you would? It's an example, right? So to me, price would lead news and everything, right? Okay. So think about it. Um, insiders in the company, if there is insider trading happening, mm-hmm. if if um, of all news that other people know, etc., um, there must be really smart analysts and hedge funds out there and FIIs or domestic institutional investors who understand that company far better than you do. They would probably sell first before revealing anything, right? So mm-hmm. any action that important players would take would be reflected in price first and True. news later, much later. And that too reported figures to the exchange on. I mean that happens much later. Okay. So you'll see any company that isn't doing well. 
started falling a long time back. This never happens, right? That the market's doing well. Oh my God, there's bad news and it's a click. It <laughs> yeah. never happens. Okay. Like never happens, right? So you will always happen like, oh, this company is great. This company is great. This company is so good. This company, oh my God, bad news. <laughs> okay. It happens much before, you know, yeah. uh, 2008 crash, abhi corona ka crash, long time back. So I think price would lead everything. It's the only single source of truth in the market. Okay. Deep words. But yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think I think it, it sort of also comes to the fact that price is ultimately what is the only truth which is out there, right? I mean, you, you can speculate about news, you can talk about, hey, what will be the impact of this news? But ultimately, if the price is not really complying and if the price is showing that it's not really doing good, then it, it is not going to do good. It's, it's just a fact. So yeah, I think that's an important point there. You know, it's so, interesting that even startups show this trend. Sometimes the fundamentals of a startup ain't that great, but every week it seems to be raising series Z, yeah. series X. <laughs> so I think that's also price, you know, that it's moving investors are just coming this price. Yeah, but, I mean, hopefully, hopefully something like, uh, something like we work doesn't happen <laughs> where you just pump in money and then I mean, that's just a different, we can talk about that one day, by the way, <laughs> let's just stick to public. Sounds good. Done, done, done. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's actually a very interesting thing because a lot of people just tend to assume that systems are go, hey, more of, you know, trading, day trader stuff. And people typically don't have the best uh, perception of day traders unless you are a day trader. Then I think this investing angle also adds, adds a lot of, you know, new sort of dimension to algos and systems that's a great point yeah, and it's not quantitative investing right it's not like people aren't doing it hmm. um, it's just the new thing in town that people haven't heard about true you know uh, i mean do you really have an edge because you have charts and financial data like no my guard has access to that data not not that my guard is but it's just the access yeah. to that information is now universal true. so what makes you special right so if you think quantitative investing is hard that's great a lot of people hmm. can't do it Quantitative trading is hard. Great. A lot of people can't do it. Learn it. Right. True. So that you have some yeah. edge. Um, and you know, I remember Jesse Livermore, his edge was running to the shop, seeing the price coming back and writing down the prices. And because he did this for a long time, he could build a chart okay. and no one had that yeah. in his diary. Yeah. And that's what made him Jesse. Uh, but everyone has that now. So you know, what's your edge? Yeah, I think I think it's sort of also about uh, the point of complacency where you just get too comfortable with what you have. Then you're like, hey, you know, this is fine. It's working. Sometimes it doesn't work, but that's just trading. But then you don't really try to take it from zero to one, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. I mean, point. we spent three, four years getting an engineering degree, but how many years have you spent actually studying trading, right? And I think trading is a data science problem. You have all this data. You have to find a pattern. You have to test it. And you have to trade it like a business. I mean, can you really guess in a business? You have, you have some data, right? So people need to take it more seriously or just don't do it. You know? True. True. That's a good point. It's, you know, especially with, with these newer traders coming in, of course, I am a new trader myself, but uh, people, when they ask me that, Hey, what, what, how can I actually trade? And I'm like, Hey, you just need to do what, what you think is right. And you need to do your research. And they think that there's just like a shortcut. Like I can tell them something which will just magically make them pro traders and millionaires and billionaires. I think that sort of uh, instant gratification kind of thing needs to sort of change. Only then you can actually do something. Good. So yeah, it's a, it's a great point. And uh, you know, any, any, any other, systems or algo related things which which have helped you as uh, you know as a systems and algo trader uh, so i think the the most after you found your system right and maybe we can talk about how to actually do that like actual one two three steps that you can do right now to to mm -hmm. do that and uh, i the difficult thing is to do that every day for years True. um don't people shouldn't connect trading with short term profits or losses um it's something that you do daily, but the results are seen over quarters or years. Um, you know, 
just because you've taken a trade today doesn't mean that you will get a result today so one trade doesn't matter two trades don't matter three trades don't matter four don't matter you have to think about the next 100 trades and that repetition right it's very difficult for people to have the discipline to actually execute a plan day after day week after week year after year it's just very difficult right uh, because in my system for example i could be losing money for 3 months consecutively okay and and then in the fourth month it will recover and then it will start making a profit i'm totally fine with that because my back testing tells me that okay 3 4 months you can be in a total loss but you still have to take those trades so intuitively instinctively it feels like a madman that i'm putting a trade i know it can be a loss today and you still put the trade because the system has to be followed True. um that's why most people can't make money from the market right so yeah. um yeah maybe we can talk about steps to become and become a trader i guess yeah that would be cool it will help a lot of people i'm sure including myself yeah <laughs> cool so uh yeah. let, let's take a real example yeah. this time so no more hypothetical examples um so how do you become an algo trader and then i'll actually give an actual algo um you this is the time where you can actually bring a pen and paper out i actually okay. write this down uh, the listeners can do that they can enjoy it i guess okay. so step 1 is just understanding how financial markets work right okay. um so uh, not that i'm doing a plug here but learn app actually has a map which talks about basics of trading fundamental analysis technical analysis options so on and so forth so that you have to understand you can also go to investopedia uh, you can check out varsity um or if you like video and you 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 want like constant communication then then learnapp.com uh, but but get the this straight right once you've understood this then is the next step um so once you've understood that then you know all the steps so you know how indicators work you know price works you know volume works oi works straddle works triangles works etc your tools are done right so your base knowledge is done after this to become a quantitative trader the first thing you need to do is have a hypothesis hypothesis means I think when this happens, then this happens. It's very simple. We've all done this. Yar, jab bhi reliance upar jaata hai na, HDFC to girna hi girna hai. Or or some or some or some idea like that, right? You can call a hypothesis a random idea too. That's fine. Then you need to learn how to quantify that idea into numbers, and then we'll do an actual example after this. This can be done in Excel. Uh, so we have an advanced course which which does this. it's called quantitative uh, it's called quantitative program right so and you do it in excel but you need to know a little bit of programming i would urge please learn it if you already do it if you already know excel then you can build it yourself basically get all the daily prices of the stock that's the open high low close and then using formula you can actually test your hypothesis um and and we'll show an example after this the the third step is you actually back test it and get your drawdown numbers your win loss ratio and uh, once you're happy with it you say okay so your results will look something like this this system made 150 trades last year this is how much i paid in brokerage and taxes um 45% of my trades were winners the rest were losses so i'm giving a bad example overall the system earned 60% a year okay the drawdown is 20% that means the maximum loss your system will incur and experience before it turns around and makes a profit so your equity will go to 120 and then come down to say 100 before it starts going up again so that 20% loss you have to jhelo it's like a prediction of the worst case scenario hmm. us traders say assume 2x of that drawdown is possible okay so it says 20% assume 30 40% is possible now this is liberating once you have these stats you can just plow in the entry exits every day and you don't have to worry about losses right because it's calculated for think about coca cola right if coca cola struck overturns and they lose a few bottles do you think the company will shut down no definitely no but a few bad trades and traders quit because they didn't have a business plan <laughs> where is your business plan to be a trader right um so so this is what it is um so once you have this you trade it it makes sense now you can automate it in something like python um or you can use a bridge now what's a bridge a bridge basically connects your broker uh, and there are a lot of bridges out there you can just type ami broker bridge a m i b r o k e r and ami broker you can actually code your strategy within ami broker 
and then it will go through the bridge and place orders via APIs to say Upstocks or Zerodha or Fires or any of these or Alice Blue or any of these brokers. Um, and you can do your research on what broker makes sense, but they offer APIs. So that's how you automate it. But make sure that the first two steps are solid before you automate yeah. anything because yeah. you don't want to automate something wrong. Like one comma here and there and <laughs> you're like totally not. Yeah. So let's do, let's go through the steps together. Kunal, you want to do that? Perfect. Those? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Cool. So we have hypothesis. After hypothesis, we have um, observation, which is your, your back test result. And then you have automation. So let's do this actually. Yeah. So here's the hypothesis. I'm going to tell you a story. Here's the story. There's a stock and the stock rallies to say 140 rupees. Okay. And there's a blue chip stock. Now, do you think people are invested in this stock at this point? It's a blue chip stock. So obviously I mean, yeah, yeah. a lot of people are invested in this. Now, since it's rallied, maybe there are a lot of traders as well. Correct. Makes sense. True. Definitely. Now the next thing, the stock opens at 150 rupees. Hmm. So it is at 140. The next day it opens at 150. Okay. What do you think is going to be the first thing that an average trader is going to think when this happens? Let's book profits. Yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Totally right. Right. Let's book. Profits. So they will sell. So temporarily the market will fall. Correct. So let's quantify this. When today's open is greater than yesterday's high. Mm. markets will fall. Correct. Yeah. That's a gap, right? Mm. So when the market gaps up, they will be profit booking in pseudo logic. That means when today's open is greater than yesterday's high, uh, then that's my shortlist. So now okay. let's say I've got a shortlist of four stocks today that actually gapped up. Mm. Now in trading, what we can do is we can short. So people, I mean, Krunal obviously knows this, but people who don't shorting means that you can place an order uh, in the hopes that the market will fall. If the market falls, you make a profit. If the market goes up, you lose money. If you didn't understand, just please go back and hear me again, yeah. but you'll basically make money when the market falls. Yeah. So now we found our hypothesis, which says every time a stock gaps up, it will fall. So we can actually short. Uh, the market opens at 9.15, we could short at say 9.20 um, and keep a stop loss. So let's keep a stop loss at say 1% okay. and let's keep a target of the day at say 3%. So now uh, I know that my risk to reward worst case, I lose 1%, best case I make 3%. So it's a one is to three risk reward ratio. But the question is every time the market gaps up, how many times does it actually fall? So if you actually run this data on say Nifty, um, you will get that 61% of the times okay. when Nifty gaps up, it actually falls. Wow. So and this is true. You can actually run the test yourself. Yeah. Um, isn't that interesting? Such a simple it's, yeah. observation. It's crazy. Um, I, <laughs> and it's intraday, but you can see it on a, on a daily chart. So just open a Nifty daily yeah. chart. You'll yeah. see market closing here. The next time market opening at the red bar. Mm. And then you'll see the market opening here, red bar. Mm. So that means the market opened up and fell. Sometimes it goes back up, but hopefully it hits 3% target and then goes back. <laughs> yeah. But that's our observation, right? And now if you run this, you will see that, you know, 61% of the time it works. Your strategy will win about 58, 59% of the times. Uh, the rest of the times uh, you lose overall. In certain years, it's made a hundred percent return. Okay. Uh, with the fifteen to twenty percent drawdown, which I think is amazing. It is. Um, so, so I mean, that's your system, right? So, what happens if your target is not hit and it's three fifteen? You just exit. You just hmm. exit at whatever you yeah. get. Um, yeah. And then that's how you code the exit. Now you can actually code this in Excel because it's just greater than yesterday's high. I mean, this it's not rocket science. True. It's simple. Um, I mean, anyone can do it. Or you put it in any broker and code it. And once you find the trades, any broker can plow those trades into uh, whatever broker and actually place those. Right. So now mm -hmm. your challenge is when you do this day in, day out, every day, forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people can't, but, but that's mm -hmm. what an algo looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions around that? I, I think the most scary part about this is that, you know, when it's an algo taking the trades, 
or when you are you know hypothetically speaking somehow so disciplined that you take a trade even if even if you feel that it won't work or something that i think is the biggest problem because when an algo takes a trade you have zero control over what's going to happen and when we take a trade we somehow inherently feel that hey you know i have some control over what might happen i think that inherent almost subconscious uh, sort of change can really shift the entire sort of uh, you know perception and feeling towards uh, algo trades and such i mean it's like driverless cars right i don't yeah. think i can sit in one of them i like to be driving <laughs> like if i lose my life it's my fault yeah. uh, you know and not because someone missed a semicolon in the <laughs> port <laughs> yeah but i'm just joking Uh, yeah. but but yeah i totally agree with what you're saying so i think a solution to that is let the algo give you the alert and you can place the order manually hmm. yeah but then at least the analysis is done mathematically true. so true I, i but then i think the inherent problem of someone you know having a negative day and then you know the algo saying that hey this alert is there and then feeling that hey man what if this trade is negative also i think again that that sort of discipline and that patience and that level of trust to your process is something which can really transform uh, you know the execution yeah totally i mean i mean draw our example to army men right um my, my father's in the army uh, he retired and they are trained to the point of conditioned that if they can, if they hear certain things they will just act they won't think okay because in the battleground if you're facing an enemy and you're analyzing If I run, what's going to happen? I mean, you'd probably be shot, right? Um, it's more of your training taking over, and you trusting that training, and that if you did that training, then you had the highest probability of surviving or winning. Uh, I think it's the same with trading, investing, right? Is that once you believe in that process, do you have the discipline? Maybe that's where the word discipline comes from. Uh, but do you have the discipline to actually do it day in day out? Uh, yeah, that that's very tough. And people think, you know, Kunal, that. finding a strategy is my struggle it's really not your struggle is being able to do it every day despite True. making losses consecutively people will just stop believing in it uh, but a successful day for a systems investor is to place the order as perfectly as he had written down on his diary mm-hmm. um, and if he can do that then it was a successful day it has nothing to do with profits or losses True. I think I think processing. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I think when when someone enters someone new enters the market I think that perception of them that hey the markets are all about money I just need to somehow make money rather than hey I need to figure out a process and I need to stick to it and I need to execute it well I think that sort of uh, difference of thought or difference of perception is what really you know starts this sort of thought process in the first place that hey i just need to focus on money you know process whatever that can go out of the window and such so i think that's a very valid point i mean And, yeah learn app does well because people uh, get burnt watching youtube videos of random people <laughs> lose money and then they say okay i want someone important who's been there like we have actual billionaires on learn app teaching right billionaire hedge fund managers teaching mm-hmm. managing billions of dollars teaching you'll trust them right yeah. um and, and they just set your expectations so low <laughs> because <laughs> they don't promise anything correct yeah. right because they're in the real world yeah. so i think that is really well uh, because it's the fight of the mind uh mm-hmm. but, but yeah you said you had some questions on insta you want to take some of those definitely definitely i so i, I posted a poll um a bit late just just so that you know the questions would be under control because i didn't want to bombard you with them uh but that did not work yeah. because i you're going to get bombarded <laughs> anyway so uh the first question is i'm a retail trader how can i benefit from algos right so algo as i said is the last step you shouldn't be doing algo trading you should be doing quantitative uh system so find out what that system is Algo is a way to automate it. So once you truly believe, after placing these orders for six, seven, eight months, that yeah, this system really works. It's just that I became a, a minute late today because my internet didn't work, or I, I I couldn't get the price right and I missed the trades. Once you start facing those issues and not profit loss issues, right? Mm-hmm. Execution issues, which happens way down the line, uh, then you automate it using Algo. So Algo can actually benefit you because you can think in a systematic way, in a predictable way of how you are going to perform 
uh, without the nuances of knowing whether you'll make money or not. So that's how yeah. algo trading can help you. Yeah, that's a that's a very important thing to understand. I agree. Now uh, the next question is that in the last few days there have been several sell-offs or sharp downward moves both in the AM and PM sessions. So how would an algo or how would you know as you said a system before an algo adapt or react to these these kind of uh, moves? Right. So here is what I think people think when they hear the word algo. They think algo is like this super computer just watching the markets <laughs> and then the markets do something and then it does some calculation then it adapts. True. Uh, this is not how algos work. Algos are simple. Um, so these are not neural networks or super computers, right? Hmm. Um, al- algorithms are basically rules to be followed. That's it, right? It's like an ATM. You ask for money. It first <laughs> checks how much, checks your pin, checks how much money you have, dispenses the cash, yeah. right? Or if we go back in time, I didn't have money, it would say no balance. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's what an algo is, right? It's just a set of instructions and you are telling them the instructions. So the premise of the question here is that the algo will react as the market moves forward when it's the other way around. We will analyze 10 years of data, put our algorithm and rules to it and see hypothetically how much money would it have made because it's quantitative. Now these up moves and down moves doesn't matter because it's already tested within the algorithm. Understood. And the algorithm is judged over 100, 200 trades, not one or two days. So I hope that answers you. You have to 100%. see on a system level how much money you're making and not on a daily basis. True, true. And I think that's one advantage of algos because when we as uh, discretionary traders that don't really use an algo see that massive down red candle, then it's like, holy shit, what's about to happen? Are the markets going to fall? Is COVID sell off coming back and all sorts of crazy thoughts come ahead. But the algo doesn't have that, right? The algo just has what you fed into it. So, I mean, the beauty is that you've probably tested like 20 down moves already in your 10 years of data. So Hmm. why are you worrying? This happened before, you know? Uh, Yeah, that's, that's an interesting way to put it. Uh, the other the other question is I've heard that algos can capture data and react to the nanosecond. Is that true? And uh, what kind of time frame does an algo typically capture? Right. So one of the advantages of algorithms is that um, the execution can happen very very quickly. Um, some firms use that to an advantage and call it um, high frequency trading (HFT). Um, now, you need to see whether that is of any advantage to you. I think to the average retail investor, including me, there is no advantage. The only advantage is as soon as my condition is detected, my order can be placed very quickly. That's it. But if I am a nanosecond faster, is there an advantage? I don't think so. Because your system is not based on uh, speed. And okay. for speed, if you really want to go down that route, what you're looking for um, is having a server inside the exchange. You can actually rent it. It's called okay. co-location or okay. colo and co-location basically um, allows you to, to see um, a market data slightly faster than everyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's only a few pesa. So unless your volume is huge yeah. uh, and usually liquidity makers will use this, um, okay. it doesn't really matter. But yeah, we do have a course around this actually um, by Siddharth Pujari. So you should check that out. Definitely. I'll, I'll try to link all these uh, in the in the show notes or something because I think it'll, it'll help just looking at the courses page just to see what happens and if it's right maybe uh, maybe the viewers can even enroll in those that would be great and uh, okay so the next question and I told you there are quite a few so uh, it is we've all heard that algos can kill retailers and that they make up for more than 90% of total transaction volume. Is that really the case? So I think this question is erring towards the age old question that can an algo take out my stop loss? I'm pretty sure that he had this in mind. The answer is no. The algo doesn't care about you, you insignificant little trader. Uh, because, you know, don't try to find reasons of you losing money and blaming it on an algo, right? Mm-hmm. The algo won't spend thousands of crores to move the market to get your stop loss out. So if that is the question, no. Can it kill retailers? No. Your discipline, your indiscipline will kill you. Your excitement will kill you. Your sadness will kill you. Not an algo. An algo will be profitable because it is able to stick to the plan. But you can do that too. So mm. quit. 
<laughs> uh, 90% of total transactions are algo i'm not sure about 90 but it's definitely 60 70% okay um, but the good thing is that you can do that too so like leave everything and start learning business <laughs> true i think but i think you know the stop loss part of this question i think what they try to say is that uh, let's say someone has placed this, their stop loss below that candle below the previous candle's low so can an algo actively you know try to get the market down by just hunting that stop loss which is something i'm sure a lot of people have heard that hey the fi's are hunting stop losses or something so is that something which is possible right so hunting stop losses is a very probably the most common question i got okay i'll tell you from my personal experience right it's not true okay and i think we try to find you can't do stop loss hunting in like nifty Hmm. or bank nifty or hdfc bank or reliance right this is a huge company can you do it in like ajuba private limited penny stock yes of course you can but then you need to see if that guy moves the market okay just to take out your stop loss what is he getting because he needs to sell a couple crores worth of stock even in a penny stock to move it down right so what is he getting in it his money is stuck now who's going to buy those shares from him hmm. so it can't so even there it won't be done you can do a pump and dump right that happens i'm sure where you excite people with fake news move the market up and then exit yeah i'm sure that happens a lot uh but then i mean your fault for listening to rumors <laughs> uh, but you can't do this <laughs> i mean even there it's your fault but you can't do it on nifty bank nifty it's just impossible you cannot and okay. it doesn't make sense imagine kronal if you had a 1000 crores would you push would you short 1000 crores of nifty to push it down 5 points and then somehow you get a message saying hey 100 retailers got stopped out <laughs> what do you do now yeah, true uh, so if the theory is that stop losses will take out and the market move further retailers can't move the market mm. so even that that's out right so uh, it's not true just don't waste your time on this just learn quantitative trading just don't <laughs> yeah. waste your time perfect so the next question is what sort of profitability can algos and systems give I mean uh, the question is akin to saying what sort of a uh, electric car can an engineer build I I think it's completely on how good the engineer is um, you know so you, you have uh, renaissance technologies which is doing 60% a year consistently hmm. using quantitative trading that makes him the best trader in the world beating warren by a mile um, on the other hand you have some of my friends who run hedge funds and they'll make say i don't know 18 19% a year which is also good uh, because it's a lot of money um so yeah i mean you have all sorts of people mm-hmm. yeah that's good i think the problem is that people think that an algo is just one thing that if it, if it's an yeah. algo then it is you know just that algo there's no customization to that in that respect so i think that that's right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so the next question is similar to the previous one it's that what's the hit rate and drawdown of an algo Yeah so I think anything over 55% is good uh my systems are closer to 60% but they don't cross 60% they're under 60% for sure right and okay. in actual trading it will become even lower so yeah um uh, and then uh drawdown right so drawdown for me 20 25% I am okay with nothing beyond that um so now the good thing about algorithms is that you can choose how much drawdown you want so if a drawdown is 20% you can just half the number of shares you trade and the drawdown becomes 10% <laughs> so you are in control not the algo not the markets not the controllers you are so take responsibility and 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 if you make a profit that's yours too right so take the <laughs> yeah. credit for that true so uh, the next question is an extension or a continuation of the previous ones and that is i have heard algos go down to an rr of less than 1 is there an ideal rr that's a good question i think 1 is to 2.5 is minimum 1 is to 3 is just amazing but 1 is to 2 to hona hi chahiye less than 1 doesn't make sense unless you're an hft company uh, which is entering and exiting 100 times within a few seconds hmm. where uh, sometimes these hft companies have a 100% hit rate oh wow so they don't make a loss okay um, it's very rare that there is a loss it's extremely rare but uh, i mean I have never seen such a system but I know such systems exist. Hmm. Um and bec- but 100% 100% accuracy means 
that they will make a very small number in each trade so that's where an rr of less than 1 makes sense True. um but i don't think we are at that level to do that so yeah understood and uh, the next question i think is very very similar to the hft uh, insight that you gave and it is are algos only used for scalping or can one take swing trades or longer term positions too yeah the answer is no you can choose a lower time frame couple of nanoseconds you can also choose high time frames a friend of mine has been short on a large company for uh, for i think almost a year and he executes his trades through an algo so remember the algo is your shopping cart yeah it, you have to put in the ingredients and then you know push it so it's just automation mm. uh, it's nothing else you could automate mm. the wrong thing as well <laughs> yeah true and uh, does al- algo help in momentum trading and how would one measure momentum you know, measure momentum using mas or something else oh that's a good question so i think if the question is how do i quantitatively measure momentum that's a good question actually so if you're using a lower time frame like an rsi um could be used distance from moving average could be used um maybe you could use a shorter moving average and if it's above that for consistent 3 days um you could use that because uh, a price is here the shorter moving average hugs so if you say okay a 5 EMA or a 10 12 EMA for the last 5 days has been above that means it's breaking out um and an easier way like i don't look at indicators at all um i just look at price so an easy way to do that is if it makes an all time high if it breaks a swing high um if it breaks the 52 week high if there's like this huge resistance and it breaks that um stuff like that um or you can also do it through um you can also do it through volatility which means if the average volatility range the atr the average to range was 10 and now it's 20 and it's made a new high then that's also momentum so you can you can measure momentum in a million ways quantitatively <clears throat> okay i i think another way could be just looking at the slope or the gradient of the moving average because naturally if if a 50 ma or a 200 ma is sloping up then the stock is possibly not in a downtrend unless it's you know retracing or something so yeah that's yeah, a makes a great point uh then comes is it recommended to build your own trading bot if you have programming skills no <laughs> i'll tell you why <laughs> i'll tell you why uh, <laughs> so i i think right so when i hear such a question i get very scared right because you have programming you can automate but what do you automate again we come back to that thing we've talked about so make a quantitative system trade it manually make sure it's actually profitable and then you can automate it okay. don't jump to automation yeah i think again people people just want to jump to automation it's like they don't want to do any work I mean, they just money want to right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, the next question is how does the algo work what makes it effective i think we we've talked about that yeah. it's hypothesizing and testing it over 1000 trades seeing you know we have like 10 things you can actually check apart from drawdown and win loss ratio and you know based on that true and uh, which languages would you prefer considering the modules packages and efficiency so i think he's talking about trading libraries um if that okay. what he hears then python is supposed to be the fastest uh, to actually place orders but if you're not doing like high speed trading it doesn't really matter you can use a bridge also all right uh, i don't think that, i don't think speed matters as much uh, for most people Mm-hmm. Again, if if your volumes aren't that large, it probably doesn't, right? So probably doesn't. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, it it depends on your frequency. If you're like one or two trades a day, then it doesn't matter, I guess. Mm-hmm. But some people would check market depth before they place orders. So I mean, you need speed for that. So if, if it makes sense, then I guess Python would be your choice. True. Uh, what are the back testing tools used in Python? So there are a lot of uh, open source libraries out there, but I mean if you're new to programming like why don't you just do it in excel and vba why don't you just do it in ami broker and get your back testing done there it's a lot simpler mm-hmm. and you can use python just for the execution okay um, i think it's a lot easier to back test there but yeah i mean our team members also back test in python so i shouldn't be saying this but, but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah So uh, but those are custom built libraries yeah those are custom built libraries so are there any open source ones that you recommend or have used 
uh, in the past. Yeah, there are some. Uh, I can give you some links, and you can put it in the description. I guess that that would be perfect. I think. Uh, the next question is machine learning in trading. Yeah. So I don't. So hmm, that's interesting, right? So what is machine learning? Basically, you have training data. You tell the computer that you want this end result. and it makes a lot of permutations to actually try to get the shortest or most efficient path to that point um so basically machine learning could be an optimization right so you're actually optimizing an existing system that's how i see it um if you're trying to get a machine to learn the markets and create a system from scratch i think that's a different thing altogether because then you're trying to make a trading brain i don't think that's possible at the moment Okay. Uh, but what you can do is you can actually give a system have bunch of parameters and then it can try to optimize it using machine learning. Understood. That makes sense. I think that is what you're talking about. So get your mm-hmm. basis. See, the answer to all of them was like, dude, stop thinking and just start making your <laughs> first system. <laughs> yeah. Uh and then everything else will follow. But like step 1 to karo. You know? So, so yeah. <laughs> I think I think your LinkedIn headline is perfect for that. Be a doer. Yeah, absolutely right. Like I hate people like thinking, thinking, thinking. Like just, I think that's what Learn App embraces. Like just be a doer. Uh, like you have doers teaching. You also be a doer. Stop thinking so much. And that's the problem with education space. You know, like people think the more they research, the smarter they become. But the truth is, the more you experiment and measure stuff, that, that's how that's how you become smart. True. Not because you researched a lot. I think the experiment is the research. and it's a lot more fun too <laughs> <laughs> true and you, th- this is a perfect segue into the next question actually which is how has the financial education space changed over the years that's a interesting question so there was no so here's my prediction okay there was no financial education in the past it didn't exist at least okay. when when i was trying to learn and when i say finance i'm actually saying trading investing i'm i don't mean mm-hmm. finance in general mm-hmm. i'm very specific talking to trading investing it didn't exist now we are at a very interesting cusp right so we have less than 2% of india that invests the market has doubled tripled for people who've opened dmat accounts even up, like after covid is crazy um india is the youngest population in the world 350 million people that's more than america combined the entire population right these guys are going to be earning and they don't know how to uh invest their money you know why because money they can't talk to professors because professors don't know how to manage money true they can't talk to their parents because our parents didn't have extra money to invest with they don't have investing experience because they were busy trying to make our education possible our sports possible you know hamare mange itni thi they didn't have extra money it's our generation which so they can't ask their parents it's our generation which actually has some extra money to invest right i remember our parents saying salary hi mil jaye wohi bahut hai mm-hmm. right yeah. um, and they used to work for 300 400 rupees salaries i'm sure your parents as well so now it's up to our generation to educate to get educated by the best people in the world who win managing for decades so that's what learnat does right so now we try to get real billionaires real hedge fund managers real doers who come and teach investing as well as trading techniques that you can use for life we don't tell you what stock to buy uh, we mm-hmm. tell you how to think to actually come to an actionable place um, and these are doers they teach you in a doer way people who graduate are doers and that, that that's what it is right just be a doer and that's i think what's changed in the financial education space that now you have these people coming out trying to teach something which an entire generation had no idea how to do um and in the yeah. future i think financial education and literacy will become mandatory part of everyone's learning school college adult because it is a life skill um and i hope like we're one of the leaders in that because there's yeah. no one else trying to do what we do that's perfect that's great to hear and uh, i think i think uh, a good way to put it would be that you guys teach people how to fish instead of just giving them the fish as the saying goes and i think that's what's needed i mean even if we talk about education space in a more broader sense that is what it is sort of going towards that you you don't want to just get everything spoon fed to you because if if that's the case then you'll never really be able to survive when the the, the going gets tough so that's a great point I mean, yeah, and I mean, it, it doesn't make sense because how can you learn something in theory and then go to a company to only get retrained? Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, that doesn't make it. Why aren't you being trained before you join a company, right? So why aren't you building portfolios before you actually join a fund manager? So we'll try to do that. That's perfect. And uh, that, that's also about it for the questions. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add to uh, you know, these questions or something that you feel needs to be said about these things? No, I just think uh, you, know, you should be doing something that you enjoy a lot. I'm sitting on a Sunday afternoon doing this interview with you. I obviously <laughs> love trading. I obviously love education. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the secret to happiness, man. <laughs> it's not the money. <laughs> it's definitely uh, doing stuff you love. So yeah, I mean, have a good Sunday, Kunal. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you too. Thanks a lot for your time. Spending a Sunday is, it's, you know, you, you, it's, it's been an hour and 15 minutes almost that we've had oh, you. At least I've had you. The recording is a little bit shorter. Uh, but you know, <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for all this wonderful insight. And uh, it's it's what 13, 14 years of experience that you've uh, tried to sort of capture just a part of it in in this 50 or so minute episode. So, thanks a lot for that. Thanks a lot, Kunal. Thanks for having me. Really, really appreciate it. This is a lot of fun, man. And really appreciate that you're trying to bring real questions from people and getting them answered. That's really cool. Thanks. Thanks. Anyway. Uh, if if you know people have other questions, I think uh, they can follow you guys on social media. You and LearnApp, I assume. And yeah, I'll, I'll just learn app. yeah, I'll just plug those uh, links somewhere, either on the screen or in the show notes or somewhere, depending on how good I am at editing these things. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's perfect. Great to have you here. Thanks again, and I hope you have a great long weekend. Hopefully, long weekend. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. Thanks, Kunal. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Take care. So it was great to have Mr. Pratik come here and talk about his experience and his views on systems and and you know quants and algo trading. And I'm sure that it helped you as much as it helped me. If you like this, which you probably did because you're still watching, then uh, you can always check out more stuff from me and from Mr. Singh and from LearnApp. All the relevant links are in the description. If there's anything specific that you'd like me to cover, then you can always comment it or share it with me on DM or any of my social media profiles. I'm always active there. That's it for this one. See you in the next.